You can do it. Yes, you can paint furniture even if you've never even touched a paintbrush or painted anything in your life. You can paint furniture and I'm going to show you exactly how to get a strong, durable finish with just two easy steps in today's video. Here are the supplies you're going to need. Some chalk paint. It really doesn't matter which brand. Just pick a color that you really like and go for it. The next thing that you're going to need is some kind of wax. I'm using Minwax Finishing Wax, but you could go with really any brand that is for furniture. You could go with, like I'm using the special dark color, or you could use clear. Doesn't matter. Next thing that you'll need is a paintbrush. I'm using Simple Green Cleaner. Another favorite cleaner of mine is Crud Cutter and a 220 grit sand sponge that you can find at any hardware store. I also like to have a ball mason jar on hand because I can just carry it around the dresser instead of accidentally tipping over my big paint can. So let's get to it. First thing that you're gonna be doing is removing the hardware. And this is just as simple as using a screwdriver and unscrewing the little screws that are in the back. If you'd like to replace your hardware, all you need to do once you remove it is measure the distance between the two holes and then you can order that particular size hardware online. Amazon has a ton of choices. You could go to Hobby Lobby. Um, you can go to D. Lawless Hardware's website and they have some great stuff as well. I'm cleaning with the Simple Green Cleaner all over the dresser and then there were a few spots that I needed to sand. Depending on what condition your piece is in, you may need to sand more or less, but you'll want the surface to be smooth. It doesn't have to be not shiny, but it does need to be smooth. I pour my chalk paint into a jar, just makes it easier to transport. And then when I'm applying, I just go for um, getting it on there first and then I'll work on smoothing it out. If you feel like it starts to dry out on you, you can always have like a little spray bottle on hand or a cup of water and add a little bit of water to your brush or your paint. And the great thing about chalk paint is it's water-based and um, works really well with adding a little bit of water if you need to. So like I said, I'm just getting it on there and then I will go the length of the dresser long ways to smooth it out. The other great thing about using chalk paint is that you don't need a primer. It adheres really well to the surface. I would use a primer if I felt like the piece was going to have a lot of bleed through, which is when like the tannins from the wood or a stain or something will seep through your paint and it turns like pink or brown. But you can just have some primer on hand if you run into that situation or go buy some primer if you run into that situation and the primer I recommend would be Zenzer Shellac and I'll link that as well as all the other products that I'm using in this video today. Bleed through is a common thing that happens but it doesn't happen on every piece and usually when it happens for me it's only in a couple little spots so I just have my spray shellac on hand and I will just spray them if they come up. Again, I'm just trying to get the paint on and then I will smooth the entire top. I'll go from one end to the other and just make nice, long, continuous brush strokes. Most times I have to do almost three coats of paint. So what that really means is I do two full coats and then a half coat in some of the areas that I feel like um, just need a little bit more coverage. I also like to distress my French pieces and actually most of my pieces. Um, anybody that says distressing is going out of style is really talking more about like the really, really heavily distressed stuff. So don't worry about that. The lived in look is always going to be in style and it just makes your piece look like it's got a little bit of character and has just aged gracefully. I'm using that 220 grit sand sponge, the same one that I would use on my prep work if I had any bumpy spots. And then usually I will just vacuum away the dust that's left behind or I will wipe it away with a microfiber cloth or whatever cloth I've got on hand. I'll just kind of dust it away. 
So the next thing that you're going to be doing is your top coat. And in this particular project, I'm using wax for my top coat, but you could use some polycrylic and I'll link a couple of those as well. I just think that wax is very beginner friendly and it's also very durable and has a really great feel to the project. Um, when you touch the dresser after you've waxed it, it just feels really nice and it's got a nice matte finish as well. So I will apply this with an old t-shirt. I keep all my kids old t-shirts and cut them up and use them on projects like this. And I apply and just kind of get it on there. As you start circling and moving it around, the wax melts a little bit and um, it's a little bit easier to work with once it's become a little bit more um, creamy. It was pretty cold out when I was doing this particular project. So you can see it's just kind of like chunks until I start working it in. The brush that I'm using here is actually specially for wax and in particular it's really great for those nooks and crannies like I have on this dresser but it's definitely not a necessity. You could apply wax with the t-shirt and be just fine on this whole project and not have to buy a wax brush was funny because this wax brush that I'm using was actually one of the first things that I bought when I was first learning how to paint furniture because everybody told me I had to have a wax brush, you know. And <laughs> nowadays, I mean, I do use the wax brush, but I use a t-shirt probably 75% of the time. <laughs> it's just funny that the things we buy when we're first learning a hobby. Once you get all your wax applied, you'll just leave it for about 30 minutes and then you can go back and see if there are any excess um, chunks or little spots that you think you might have applied it too heavily and then you can remove those. Um, you can see like I, you know, it comes on as chunks and then once you get moving it smooths out. I'll go from one end to the other and then here is the before. Are you ready? Ta-da! <laughs> Here's the after. It turned out so beautiful. It's all the things I love. French. It's got some color to it that makes you happy when you see it. It's vintage. Love it so much. Well, we're all done with this tutorial and painting this dresser. I hope that this has inspired you to give painting furniture a try. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. Leave a comment below. I love to answer questions and help. I am on Instagram too, so if you follow me over there, you can actually send me pictures of your projects, and I'd love to share with my followers some of the projects that you guys are working on. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.